first thing we're gonna do is test the battery itself. And so you're gonna take your multimeter here, and it's really important down below that you have this plugged into the proper side for what you're measuring. So we're gonna be measuring volts, so we're gonna have it in this side. If you have it in the wrong side and you're measuring different outputs, you have the likelihood of, of uh, blowing a fuse on, on the multimeter. So we're gonna go for volts first. I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in here. The black one's always here in the middle. Uh, now, next we're gonna turn it on and we're gonna turn it on to the range that we're measuring it in. So we're gonna go ahead and go into our 20 volt range and if you look, it has the solid dash on the top with the little dashes below it. And so that's direct current. So we're gonna go ahead and just set this down here where you can see a reading. And now we're just simply going to push these on top of uh, each of the proper leads. So as you see, the battery is 12.32 volts. That's pretty good, about 12.6 is a, is a perfect battery. So this battery otherwise is pretty good. Okay, so something I like to do is roll the window down so that you'll be able to get in here without opening the door. Okay, so for our next step, now we're going to move over to our amp range. We're going to go with a bigger amp. We're not going to be down in the smaller milliamp range. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out and put it in a 10 amp range. Okay, so next we're going to disconnect the uh, negative battery terminal. And you want to make sure you're doing this on the negative side. Don't do it on the positive side so you don't short anything out. Okay, we're gonna remove the terminal. Okay, so now that we've disconnected the negative battery terminal, we're gonna to have to wait a while. Uh, another tip that you can try is honk the horn, turn the headlight knob on and back off. And uh, that should help drain any, uh, anything that's still in the electrical system. Now on your meter, we're gonna to have to switch this over to the other side. We're going from the volts, ohms, and milliamps to a different scale. So we're gonna put it on our 10 amp scale here. Okay, so we're gonna move this over to 10 amps now, and you wanna make sure that you're doing that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take one end of our meter and put it on the negative battery terminal and then the other one on the actual car. And so we're getting 1.8 amps. Now a milliamp would be a thousandth of an amp and so you shouldn't have more than 50 to 100 milliamps. This was basically 1500 milliamps. Okay, so now that we're on our 10 amp system here, we're gonna reach down and we're gonna touch both the connector. And if you want, you can pry it in here and then the battery. Now let me show you an example here. Let's say you take your dome light switch and turn it on. Even though the battery is disconnected, it's gonna connect it through our meter here. This is why we wanna be on a 10 amp circuit, because if we're on such a small circuit, it could blow this out. We don't wanna do that. So anyway, just so for an example, I flipped that switch, and so now we're gonna take a measurement. Okay, so with the switch on, just say like uh, the bulb was burned out but the switch was still turned on and you were wondering why your battery was draining. Now if we check this, if you look here, we have a two and a half almost amp drain. And so that's, uh, that's what would happen if say the bulb was missing or pulled out but the, the switch was still flipped. So let me turn the switch off. Now as we measure it again, it's dropped down. However, there is still something that's drawing amperage here. So we're still at 1.6 amps. Now, it would be really easy if, say, you had a dead battery and you charged it, and when you put it back on, you could see that you had just left a light on. Well, that's all we're really doing here, but since we can't see current, we're using our multimeter to see where this is. So just imagine it as if what we're looking for is where the light is left on, but since we can't see a light bulb, we're trying to see it come up on our multimeter. Okay, so as you can see, what we've done here is we've attached our two leads uh, with the, it doesn't really matter which one's on which side, but we have our power lead here, 
on the actual cable. We have the negative here on this side. And so what you're gonna wanna do, now that we're getting our reading, is look inside your fuse panel. Here's one that's inside the engine bay, and you can start with this one, and then you work your way inside. But what you wanna do is take your, your fuse puller, or even just a pair of needle nose pliers. Okay, so as we're watching our amp draw here, we're gonna see as we pull these fuses out, if we pull one out and it makes a difference. So that one didn't make any change. That one didn't make any change. And eventually you should be able to pull the circuit that's causing the draw. So we're just pulling and removing each of these. Now one of the main things you want to start with is the uh, any aftermarket accessories you have because they may have tapped into them and found power somewhere where they shouldn't have. Might have found a fuse that gives power to it whether the car is turned off or not. So next we're going to go inside the car after you've gone through all those fuses and test the other ones. So on the Mustang, this is just uh, right under where your feet are for the driver. Now remember, just as we saw when we flipped the switch on for the light, even though the battery wasn't connected, it still would uh, send power there once the multimeter's connected. So we don't wanna open the door, because once you do and close it, you're gonna have to wait at least 30 seconds for the light to come off. Even if you turn that one off, there might be other systems that when the door opens up, the car wakes up. Uh, so uh, if you can, it's best to uh, crawl inside the car or if you can find a way to uh, tape off the sensors so the lights never come on when you do open it, then you can do that too. Also, it's very important to keep in mind that if you have your multimeter hooked up to the battery as we do here and it's only on a 10 amp series and then let's say you open the door and the door fuse is you know a 30 amp fuse, then you could potentially blow out your multimeter because uh, just imagine the multimeter itself as being just a tiny little fuse right now. So that's why it's important to have it on the right setting and make sure that you don't have it hooked up and then turn on your headlights or you know do something that's going to uh, overpower your multimeter and burn it up. Okay, so we're down by the brake pedals. I did a Dukes of Hazard and came through the window because I don't want to open the door and mess up anything. And so what I'm gonna do is just pull these fuses one by one, and I have my wife who's gonna be outside telling me if it uh, drops down to zero on the amp meter. Now, um, if you want, you can, if you have two phones, you can FaceTime yourself so you can see, you know, what's going on with the, uh, your, uh, vol the, your multimeter. Or um, if you have leads that are long enough, you can stick it on the windshield so that you can kind of keep an eye as you're doing it. So you can do this alone. If you have two people, it's just a little bit easier. So I'm gonna go ahead and just start pulling these one by one until we find which one is causing our, our draw. Now, if you remove all the fuses and you still have a draw, then it's gotta be hardwired into somewhere doing something strange. Now, I remember in, when I first got this car, there was this switch right here that did nothing. Uh, I was assuming it went to a uh, XM radio that used to be in the car. And so that kind of led me down this trail and I looked back in here and I found some wires. Now this is pretty bad news because not only are these wires exposed and not capped off, but one of them right here is even fraying. And so that would have caused a short and blown a fuse anyway, uh, most likely if they still were connected to something. So I don't know if these go to the back of the CD player uh, for the XM, I'm gonna have to pull that apart. And I followed the wire over here and found another one. This one was capped off, and so I just cut it off so that I could kind of take some readings and everything and, and cap it off properly and all that. But uh, it is uh, a good idea to look near the fuse panel because if somebody's tapping into power, sometimes they go off of the fuses, but sometimes they will pull the radio out and they're gonna find a wire that's hot. Uh, so, you know, running through here is a harness that would go to, for example, a convertible top switch that all the Mustangs are wired for that, but you don't obviously have the switch if you have a hard top. 
but people will tap into that for fog lights because it has power when the ignition's turned on, all kinds of stuff. So uh, that's where it can start to turn into a nightmare is you don't know where somebody else has tried to find power or what they've done. But this is uh, what will lead you down uh, the right path is uh, trying to pull these fuses one by one and you should be able to see a drop and it'll tell you, okay, it's on that circuit somewhere. And so if you just go, for example, if you look here, these are all numbered. So if you were to say, you know, spot 11 there, for example, that 15 amp fuse, uh, you know, you'd pull that up on a diagram and see what that controls. And so if that's, for example, did say convertible top switch was one of them, even though you don't have a convertible, that would tell you maybe somebody has hooked up into a power source somewhere on that uh, harness for the uh, convertible top switch and you know use it to add in fog lights or something now this is where it might get really frustrating or people get very confused is when it comes to a harness okay but i'm going to try to make this real simple you'll see that it's it's not that bad so this is a spare door that i have here and if you saw a video on my white gt uh, I put a new door on it and all of a sudden the radio wouldn't work or the speaker wouldn't work in that door. And so what I did is I just uh, unplugged that entire harness and took it from the other door and it worked perfectly. So here's the idea. If you look at a plug, these are all going to a certain accessory. So even though it looks really complicated, all these things, if you follow them, it just goes and branches off to the speaker, it branches off to the door lock actuator, it branches off to the window switch. Okay, so it looks confusing, but you know, here's the whole circuitry where all the buttons are to roll the windows up and lock the doors and all that. So even though it looks complicated, it's all just wires going from a plug to these different accessories one by one. So let's say that you found out that you were having a short and you keep blowing out uh, a fuse and it has to do with the window system is what you, you find. So what you would have to do is find, okay, this, these are the switches that control the windows and you'd wanna follow these wires until you see one that, uh, for example, somebody tapped into to put in aftermarket speakers. So maybe it had something to do with that and that's why you know, you're having your problems. In this case, this is exactly what had happened. Somebody had tapped into this speaker. This is where it normally plugs in to the car's sound system. And so they were using that power and they wired in their own speakers you know, to a different speaker. And so that's why it wasn't working. There was a problem with the wiring. Um, so anyway, that's what you would have to do is okay speaker isn't working check the wiring you might have to follow it all the way back until you find where somebody went through and tried to tap into it for power for a different accessory something i had seen once for an example is inside the wheel well somebody had lowered their car and there's a harness that goes through here and uh the car was so low that the wheel ate away at the wheel well lining and then it started eating away at the harness that goes through there. And so the person started having an issue and things started shorting out, fuses started blowing and they said, what's going on? And so, you know, somewhere along that line from the battery to the accessory, the wire was stripped open and shorting out. So uh, when something isn't working on your car, it's an indication, you know, that's the telltale sign that something uh, is wrong and most likely with the wiring harness somewhere. So. Hopefully this uh, gives you an idea, but you know, it's really, it's really simple. It looks messy, but it's really not. So, you know, one of these plugs, you know, has all these wires coming out of it, but they all just control different things. So uh, hopefully this has helped you a little bit. And uh, if you have any questions, put them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks for watching.